Hello, this is Dr. Liu at Li Time. Welcome back. So first, I want to answer the questions from uh, my member. Uh, she asked about when we, when I demonstrate making the pineapple hydrosol. Uh, the question is, can the vitamin C be collected in hydrosol? The answer is no, because vitamin C is not volatile. They can dissolve in water. It's good but they don't vaporize when we're boiling it. So it will stay in the water and uh, with the temperature go up, the vitamin C will decompose. It will change into other chemicals. So the vitamin C will not go with other the scent of volatile compounds or the essential oil into the hydrosol. So the hydrosol will have its uh, the pineapple, the scent, and it has the pineapple, kind of, you know, the sweet um, scent, but uh, it won't taste sour as vitamin C. But uh, you can add a vitamin C after you make the hydrosol, you know, by just adding the vitamin C powders into the hydrosol. It will be dissolved. And the vitamin C is possible to be used as a preservatives, even it's not a technically a preservative. Uh, if you want to know about preservative, about hydrosol, you can watch my last video. I specifically talk about preservatives for hydrosol. Um, but it can manage the pH. It can manage the pH at the acidic range, which is perfect for some uh, the preservatives can be used in the hydrosol. So leave your questions uh, and uh, I will answer questions uh, periodically. In this video, I will talk about frankincense because uh, I also got a lot of uh, questions and of course ask about can I do the frankincense uh, distillation to make a hydrosol. Um, this video will explain you how can you make uh, the hydrosol extract. There are two different ways, infusion and distillation. And if you want to make uh, the frankincense hydrosol, there are uh, something you want to know before you start it. It's very important. You don't want to ruin your device. Frankincense is uh, extracted from the frankincense trees and it's also called a frankincense tears. Um, nowadays, people just artificially cut the tree open so the tree will release its gum and resin to protect itself. Then those extract is uh, harvested and then solidified into that's the particles called uh, frankincense tears. Frankincense tears contain mainly three major compounds. The first one is a resin and the second one is a gum and the third one is its essential oil. So resin is a natural mechanism for the tree to protect itself and to avoid you know, other invasion after it got a wound. And the gum is a defense system to kind of close up itself and just help uh, recover from the wound. And essential oil is the protection and to uh, just kind of push away those bugs uh, or the uh, bad stuffs away from the wound. So it's a whole natural recovery system from the frankincense tree. Because the extract from the tree contains the precious the chemicals, those are, have a benefits to our human health. For example, within the resin, it's called a Bosphatic acid that has been studied and, and it is believed has the benefits of anti-inflammation and anti-cancer properties. Gum mainly contains a polysaccharide. Polysaccharide has the benefits of uh, boost the immune system and also help uh, soothing the skin. And the last part is it's uh, essential oil or volatile oil. It brings the unique scent of the frankincense and also it has many benefits of uh, anti-inflammation, antimicrobial, antiseptic, 
and its volatile oil has many benefits on the skin recovery, skin regeneration, and mood balancing, reduce stress. So these are three major compounds. The resin has the boswellic acid. The gum has the boost immune and soothing, and its uh, uh, volatile compounds has benefit of the anti-inflammation, antimicrobial. So how do we extract the frankincense for the best use of all these different compounds? So when we talk about the extraction methods, so we talk about what is the most efficient way to take that targeted compounds out of the material. So we talk about the frankincense as a resin, the gum, and the volatile compounds. So resin is not soluble in water. So that means we cannot use water to extract the resin, but it can be partially dissolved into oil and even better solubility in the alcohol. So if you are targeting at a boswellic acid, then you can choose either use oil, infusion, or the tincture. So when you use the oil for the infusion, you can use jojoba oil, olive oil. Those oil can help uh, break down the structure of the tear and uh, take those resin portion out of the material. But uh, because the resin has not fully dissolvable in the oil, so it only take a partially of the boswellic acid into the oil. Um, tincture, if you use alcohol, alcohol has better solubility compared with oil. So you can make tincture by using the uh, alcohol for a stronger extraction. Because alcohol content in the tincture, it has different application compared with the infused oil. Infused oil is more popular for the massage oil, skin care, and then the tincture is mostly for the ingestions. So now we talk about the resins part, that's boswellic acid. What about the gums? So the gums has more solubility in water compared with oil and alcohol. You can use the frankincense tea to make a tea or water infusion. You can just put in the water and lift up the temperature and don't go too high. So you want to keep at uh, around 150 Fahrenheit for the best extraction. So the gum portion, the polysaccharide, will dissolve into the water. And the water will become a little sticky and you can use that as a skincare, as a mouthwash. So the third one is the volatile compounds. That's including its uh, essential oil and hydrosol. So we're gonna do a distillation to make the frankincense essential oil or hydrosol. But uh, before you do that, I wanna make sure, you know, don't do it in the wrong way. If you do it in the wrong way, you will cause a lot of messy and it become uh, um, very hard or even impossible to clean. So, when you are doing the distillation to make the hydrosol or even essential oil from frankincense, first you need to find a, a good device. So we carry the three different models. And the first one is automatic as ADI. And the second and third is the manual version that's including the LT3000 and the KD5. We don't recommend you do the tier in the LT3000 and the KD5 because those material, once you heat up, they will become very sticky and they can stuck inside the two products and make you almost impossible to clean. And it's not safe to use this device as well. If you look at the manual, we say no resin, no powder, you know, in the LT3000 and the KD5. But with ADI, it's possible to make your frankincense hydrosol. As you can see in my last video, I demonstrate you how to make the frankincense hydrosol. However, here I 
couple of things I want to highlight. You want to be carefully when you use, you want to think to use ADI in order to avoid, you know, the big trouble, you know, after your the hydrosol making to clean up the mess. First, you need to follow the ratio. Add water no more than two and a half liter within the pot and uh, no more than two ounces of the frankincense tears mixed with water. So you want to do the hydro distillation. Uh, it's different with other herbs. Most of the herbs, steam distillation, it works pretty good. But uh, for the frankincense, we want to do the hydro distillation because we need to break down the solid structure of the tear so it can release its volatile compounds. And you can make wonderful the frankincense hydrosol, um, but uh, you probably only see a tiny bit of oil because we only use small amount of uh, frankincense tears. The second one, so do a short distillation. Make sure you have enough water left in the pot. So with two liter or two and a half liter of water in the pot, we want to keep at least one liter of water within the pot after distillation. That means you only make one liter of the hydrosol. If you have two liter of the water mixed with your two ounces of frankincense. So in the worst case, if you have the resin stick in your pot, then how do you clean it? There are a couple ways you can try. The first one, you heat up the pot by soak into a water bath and then pour the water in the pot and try to heat up and release those glues or the sticky part on the, on the wall of your pot and dissolve back into the water. So this can help remove some of the gums. As we mentioned, the gum has, uh, can be dissolved in water but not a resin. So for the resin part, you can either try by using the oil, like using the cheap oil, olive oil, with the soap together, and let it sit there for a whole night. So let the oil and the soap eat in to dissolve the resin. Or you can use a high proof of the alcohol, like a, you know the sanitization alcohol. You can use that to soak your the, the resin and this can help uh, remove or loose at least loosen the sticky part from the pot and then you can use some tool to help you to peel off them from your pot and uh, hopefully these methods can help you solve the big problems the messy problems so remember i repeat so for the kd5 and the lt3000 so you don't want to use any frankincense uh, resins in the in these two products and the with adi it you can try but uh, remember follow the rule follow the rule it's not worse you know just kind of leave uncleanable mass in the pot and never overfill over two and a half liter that's critical so that will cause a lot of trouble even you can clog your the ADI machine. Okay, so hopefully you learned something about what is a frankincense and uh, what are the ways to extract frankincense and how do you make uh, your frankincense hydrosol safely and the, uh, and the recommendations for your cleaning. And uh, thank uh, Robin, Robin prepared a document uh, guide you through from the beginning to prepare and to finish and the troubleshooting after you know the cleaning procedure as well. Um, please leave your the comments how do you use frankincense and how that frankincense help you and uh, leave your questions and comments and I will answer your questions periodically. Okay this is Dr. Liu see you next time.